so the last we left off, um, all of you were in the battlefield, and actually I'll put the full map here as well in case like you want to visualize it or something. I will click that. Cool. Worth it. I will click that. <sighs> yeah. Uh, you can move your own pieces around, but I'll do everything narratively. Like, yeah. <laughs> so PTSD. here we go. PTSD. <laughs> All right. So. Where am I? Yeah, and then the last thing that happened was that you all realized that the creature that you just defeated seems to be a simulacrum of N. <laughs> and yeah, you all were like at a very high high until you realize that it's the body that was falling was melting and now all of a sudden that high high feels like a very um sinking feeling and as you're feeling that you notice in the distance that a figure emerges in the distance so let me see if i can put him here there you go over there so once again really far away from all of you guys and then <laughs> the second time i shot <laughs> isn't that right <laughs> <laughs> and then after that he's like impressive yeah over there yeah, no. <laughs> he's just impressive now then let me show you real power and then he casts wish to make another simulacrum of himself mm -hmm. okay yeah no initiative <laughs> nah, no need for that because there's too little time if we were to continue that so here's what's gonna happen so immediately after that you all kind of look in horror because you've used up all of your resources and you're quite frankly not looking forward to fighting him a second, a third time. Yeah, a second time. There's two of them. There's two of them, so it's a third time. So we just add two. <laughs> there you yeah. go. We skipped the second and went straight to third. <laughs> we just add them the two of them, so we're technically fighting him three times now. Yeah. And um, yeah, after that, he does the same shit again where he sets up his globe of invulnerability once more and orders his simulacrum to fire a chain lightning at all of you guys, which does hit, so don't worry about rolling for saves or whatever. This is all We're kind of a... like narrative for a bit. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So hold on to your butts, people. Okay, I'm, so, ho I'm yeah. holding my butt. <laughs> <laughs> all right so yeah you guys get chain lightning and you're even lower on your resources now you're also weakened from that chain lightning and things look really dim for the heroes for all of you guys but then all of a sudden there's a group of individuals that appear near n so i'm just going to put some icons because i Fortunately, don't have like NPCs ready for this. So here we go. Oh, that's Edgar Allan Poe. Oh, some Viking dude. Some Viking dude. What <laughs> fuck is that? What's yeah. that? Oh my God, where? Where is it? <laughs> it looks like that. Looks like freaking what do you call it? Uh, freaking. The Space Marine, the Ooh. Primark. Oh, it's Robot Gulliman! Oh my god! It's Robot Gulliman! <laughs> <laughs> Who's this? Where? Who's this Julius <laughs> Caesar looking? <laughs> so this guy, actually... North Raffy, North. On top of... North, 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 North Raff, over here. Oh, okay, okay. okay. So well, yeah, the I... guy that looks Caesarian, that's Robot Gulliman. He's the leader of the Ultramarines. Uh -uh. And then that guy on top of him... It's actually another prime mark of the white scars. Oh my god, my nerd <laughs> got me out of here. We're oh, no, no, no. Why is Emperor Nero here? What is this? Why is this said, Roman Emperor here? <laughs> I said that's for both poorly, man, dude. Okay. But yes, he's, he's actually like modeled after Roman, so he is certainly Emperor Nero. Yeah, he's Emperor Nero. He's gonna set everything on fire hmm. for the second All time. Right. All right, so anyways, going back, <laughs> let's bring it back, people. So, Thank Fatal, you. you actually recognize these people. These people oh. are from the Order of the Gauntlet. Hey. Where the fuck are they? 
All right. So do, do I know who they are? Yeah, you do. So right, one cool. of them is named Flint Iron Fist. Okay. The other one you know to be a man named Wildthorn. So that's the guy over here. And then um, <laughs> the other dude, the one at the bottom right, that's Jeffrey Forrest. Um, the one on the top right you don't seem to be familiar with. It might be top like right. a new recruit. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. And then, yeah, right now they're surrounding N. And N was a bit surprised that they came out of nowhere. And they're fighting against him right now. So, yeah, they're keeping him so. busy. <laughs> yeah, they're keeping him busy. They dispelled his globe of invulnerability. Mm. And yeah, they're basically giving N and his simulacrum a hard time now. One of them actually went and dispelled magic the simulacrum right away Ooh. using a high level spell slot. Ooh. So it's nice. dead. Nice. <laughs> GG. GG. <laughs> GG, well played. <clears throat> Alright, and then while you all are witnessing that fight going on. Um, Arturo Maro actually shows up near the, all of you. Mm -hmm. so all, all of you are kind of like at the bottom left, no? Yep. Yeah. There you guys are. Oh, there he is. Yeah. God, he looks so badass. <laughs> he does, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, Arturo says basically that the, the fight's not over yet. I've asked for aid while the, all of you are busy distracting the simulacrum. Nice. And then, as quickly as he appeared, he is also casting Wish now, and he says, I wish that all of you regain all of your strength. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice! Yeah! So everybody go ahead and do a long rest right now. Let's go! <laughs> yeah. Nice! Yeah, everybody oh, go get uh, yourself Oh, Sana's here, by the way. Yeah, Hi. Yo, Sana. Sana. <laughs> Sean in the house. Sean in the house. Okay. Hey, guys. Sana. We'll chat. His A. Okay. Gotcha. Okay. Because she's doing no problem, stuff. No problem. Yeah. And doing stuff okay. Like so, anyways, after that, um, basically all of you are back to full health, back to full spell slots, back to full resources, the whole shebang. Bang. And not only that, but the buffs that you started the initial battle with, mm -hmm. they all come back as well. Duh. Nice. Yeah. yeah, bro. I. Yeah, and then um, after casting that, however, let me see what happens to him because if it's something outside of copying a spell, something bad could happen. Uh oh. Dude, it's exactly 33. <laughs> That's insane. Okay, 33% chance. So that means, yeah, you notice that Arturo Maro's strength suddenly completely disappears. And oh, what? he's uh -oh. like on the ground right now. No! Yeah. Dante rushes up to him. Yeah, you do. And then. He says, worry not my grandson, for I am not the actual Arturo Amaro. And then oh. as he says that, another Arturo Amaro. Everything's a simulacrum. <laughs> Dante, Dante hovers over the simulacrum. It's okay. I'm a simulacrum too. <laughs> yes. Please, man. I fly by and I said, I'm also a simulacrum. What? <laughs> and, then, and then Fatal just like, what's a simulacrum? <laughs> I, just, oh. I just cut my wrists, you know, and snow just comes out. And stuff. Oh my god. Alright, alright. Oh, right. I don't fuck up. Okay, Wait, okay. And my wife up there so she's like, I too, I'm a <laughs> Yeah, guys. Maybe it's a similar, it's a similar group too. Today, today's episode is called The Simulacrum Society. <laughs> oh my god. That sounds like a legit campaign. I know, right? Simulacrums, you know, they're finding their way into this world and shit like that.
Oh, the okay, fortress okay. just grows a mouth, and he's like, I too am a simulate, bro. <laughs> I have right, to right, write right. that down, because I will make a book out of it. Simulate hey, book. I'm glad I gave you inspiration <laughs> for that. <laughs> that sounds like a, real, a legit freaking book. Alright, okay, pulling it back, pulling okay. it back. Okay. <laughs> so, Arthur Amaro appears before all of you. <clears throat> and then he says, are you ready to defeat my former pupil? And as he says that, he's beginning to cast a spell. So... Like <laughs> Alright, so with that, he looks at how many are you? One, two, three, four, five. He casts Scatter on all five of you, Ooh. and you appear right next to... Wait, hmm. how many people can be affected by Scatter, Wayne? Uh, uh, up to five. Can I five? Yeah, five up people. Up to five. Yep. Ah, okay. <clears throat> Alright. <clears throat> so Arturo is just gonna... Hang back. Actually, you know what? No, instead of doing that, he'll use Arcane Gate. Because he wants to be there too. Or so teleport. He makes an arcane gate. Uh, no, teleport is a bit weird in how it's worded. Ah, so okay. it'll just be arcane gate. Yeah. And then through that arcane gate, you all appear kind of like right next to, like within melee range of. Uh, yeah. And... Yeah. Surprise, motherfucker. <laughs> surprise, motherfucker. <laughs> and uh, the last surprise theme song from Persona Place. Oh, <laughs> Your last surprise. Hell yeah. Yeah, the and then, um, All of his legendary resistances throughout all of that battle has been like completely used up because all of them were not trying to damage him, but trying to hold him down. Got it. And then Arturo... With his spell slot, he's going to be casting Otto's Irresistible Dance. So, <laughs> by its nature, it's irresistible. <laughs> yep, it is so, irresistible. Yeah, it's irresistible. So, right now, he's just dancing in place. Hey. <laughs> yeah. He can cast spells, but no? Yeah. No, he can. He Clap can. that ass. Oh, he can. Oh, okay. Clap yeah, that ass in. But, like... <laughs> start yeah, start so throwing right gold at him. <laughs> Oh shit! <laughs> yeah, and then as that happens, he just looks at Arturo, and you can't see a face, but you can tell that he's kind of like giving a scoffing smile and says, "Well played, master." And then now is the opportunity for everyone to do their biggest shot against M. So. I'll start with Sina because I don't know how long you can stay with us, Sean. So go ahead and tell me what your final blow against N is going to be. Oh my god, I'm not prepared. I still have to open my sheet. Can you circle back? <laughs> sure, sure, sure. I'll circle back to you. So let's start with maybe Fender. Go ahead, mm -hmm. Fender. Fender, go. Uh, yeah, so I basically take both my swords out right and i attack him with all of my attacks basically yeah <laughs> and i oh, action yeah. surge yeah, oh, yeah. And, I, and i hit him again do i roll for that <laughs> Do you want to? I'll let you have this time. We have a bit of time. So you go got ahead. like five crits off. Uh, you <laughs> roll all of these with advantage because he is dancing. Yeah. <laughs> oh That's crazy. God. Here we go. Hey, what's 22. Oh, Wait, shit. sorry. Oh, what the, what the hell? Why did I... I don't know. Valermo Sword of Hellfire. Such a cool name. Hellfire. Cool name. Dark Fire. I want your album win. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm so excited <laughs> by like Oh shit. I want the beat. I want the beat. I wanna to listen to that while like doing work or something. Yeah. Ooh, 29. Oh, 29. 29. Oh, 30. Oh, 30. What? 17. Oh my god, I better calculate all this. My god. Beautiful. 
What is happening? Yeah, I'm getting... Beautiful. 20 plus 20 plus 17. That's nice. Ooh. Uh, so that's the offhand and then uh, action surge All or three right. more attacks, right? Yeah, Okay. Wow! Crazy. Yeah! So that's it. So I basically oh just God. dance around and then I, you know, I jump <laughs> and then I keep slashing. <laughs> you dance along with him, you know? Along yeah. With him. <laughs> oh, so this is what you do. So this is what we do now. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what we're doing now, yeah? <laughs> oh my god, guys. Fenrir, 138 damage. Crazy. What the yeah. hell? Oh my god. But what's the benchmark for this? Wasn't how much did the raid it? How much are you doing? Huh? Be I don't know. With the, with the smite one? With the, with the one I gave you? What's that? Like, oh, I don't... Oh, yeah, like 300, 300 something. Plus, oh, okay, okay. Well, it, it is level that. 20. <laughs> it is level 20, right? Yeah, Just yeah. Just saying. Yeah, that's true. All if right, if then... Boom reaches that point, he could hit, hit, like, what, five times? I think so, yeah. Yeah. All right, so Fenrir, you go in like a whirlwind of slashes as oh, you man. basically do your own dance as well and you slash yeah. him <laughs> it's like your dancing partners right now yeah. <laughs> but, That's so cute. yeah and then you end by being on his side and slashing him with your valermos one more time and he looks really really hurt from that series of attacks crazy <laughs> That was crazy. Oh my god. Okay, next up we'll go with Fatal. How do you want to deliver your final blow? I just chain lightning him. And a destructive rat, you know? Nice. The classic. The classic. Okay, so Fatal with a total of 80 lightning damage. Yeah, I float while doing it with yeah. my eyes. Freaking lightning. I think Fenrir really. could have also oh I, I i i just add what do you call this How superiority many? die yeah yeah oh, all yeah. my superiority oh, you die. Add all of it noise yeah, noise <laughs> <Nice. laughs> freaking <laughs> nice there we go one three eight plus <laughs> crazy <laughs> oh my god 168 Dang. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Nice one, Battle Bros. Two hundred forty-eight. <laughs> we, we fish, but we fist bump after that. Yeah, we fist bump right after that. Hell yeah. yeah. Uh, so, so he got he got burned. He got uh, a bit of cold damage mm -hmm. and electrocuted. some electricity. <laughs> yeah. electricity. Uh, got electrocuted. Jesus oh, God. Christ. Make him suffer, please. <laughs> Make him suffer. All right. Next up, uh, Sean, are you ready? Because I'll move on to the Rico Langsa if you're not ready yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, basically, okay. uh, I missed the first part, but is there like a part where we that we recover like after a day yes. or something, or is this immediately? Yeah, after yeah, right? yeah. yeah. Rest. Our yeah, tour right. basically wish that we are back to our full strength, so awesome. we have everything back. Yeah. All right. Yeah, so like. Um, Sina's eyes like start to uh, like she she looks incredibly she looks intense and then there's like it suddenly look like looks like there's a storm brewing above them you can see angry clouds and then Ooh. like a storm made up of sheets of like roaring flames so she casts firestorm and it just keeps slamming down but just in one <laughs> one um one ten foot cube nice <laughs> one ten foot cube. <laughs> So it's nice. just like one concentrated area, and that will be. Yeah, and then after all, a deck save know. with disadvantage. Oh my god! Oh, yeah, thirty-eight damage. Sure. <laughs> thirty-eight <laughs> damage. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Cinnabar yeah. So that's her. That's her move. Nice. Cinnabar at thirty-eight damage as sheets of fire overlap on him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he can barely breathe in this fire. And he can't even avoid it because he's using all of his movement to dance. So he's just dancing in fire right now, actually. <laughs> 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 I did not expect it to be this comedic, but there you go. <laughs> Alright. <clears throat> nice one, Cinnabar. Rico, your turn. Okay. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to cast. X-Blade's Curse as a bonus action. All and right. then, 
I'm not gonna, you know, I'll cut to the chase at 8th level. I'm going to cast Scorching Ray at him. Oh. And oh I essentially... God, here we go. I essentially do what the same thing that you know. Here's a game to demonstrate what it looks like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god! That what? Is what happened? So cool. Oh um, shit! Oh. Uh, it's three, nine. three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's nine beams. Okay. Let me just. Roll 9d20s to see if, like, you know... These are all at with advantage, by the way. <laughs> okay, I'll roll them twice. twice. Uh, uh, exclamation mark. Oh, wait. Sorry. Yeah, exclamation mark. Uh, <laughs> oh my god, dude. The fire along with the other fire. Okay, uh, let's see if you get any crits. Okay, so that's a 16, 18, uh, no wait, this is already like plus, this is plus 12 now by the way, because oh I also god. increased my charisma. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> so let's 21, see. 21, 21, um, 8, 8 plus 12, 20, shit, okay, yeah, everything hits, Raph, go ahead. Okay. Great. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> And this is a plus six because of the Hexblade, because my proficiency is added, so... Yeah, let's see. Who beams? So that's nine times six. Nine times six is 54. Oh my god. 54 d6? <laughs> I don't know, like, the the plus six, but... Nine ah, okay, six. that's 54. Yeah. And then yeah, the dice, the it, uh, there's like three... Oh no, wait, 9 times 2. Oh, that's 18 d6. Yeah. 18 d6 plus 54, you said? Yeah, plus 54. What the fuck, dude? <laughs> what is this shit? Okay. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, basically the battlefield's on fire. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. It looks so cool. The, the DM has to make his own Just thing. look at the gif, you know? That's basically it. <laughs> oh my yeah. god. Okay. It's just a nuclear explosion at this point. <laughs> I know. It pairs really well with the firestorm. It's like just fire everywhere in N's area right now. <laughs> oh god, that's the oh, dude yeah. that with a child owner, right? <laughs> with the child dude. owner? What? Yeah, this is on this is on Tuesday night. Oh, yeah, yeah. It, it was, yeah. <laughs> the owner, the owner of that dude is a child. It's a kid. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. It's, uh, it's the one it's the one getting blown up. Getting Hercules, you know. Yeah, no, the right. one is getting blown up. <laughs> Yo, okay, let's pull it back. <laughs> let's pull it back. And then finally, Dante Morrow. Uh, Dante, before entering the Arcane Gate, will have casted Shadow Blade again on the seventh level. And then All right. he appears here. Uh, I imagine he, just for the narrative, he's like not there because he's like in the ethereal plane and then he blinks there. Uh, but I will play the Blade song again. So. Oh, yeah. Oh, let's go play it. Let me do, let me do go. that. I'm going to get LSS <laughs> later again. Jesus Christ. Uh, I think so, yeah. Let me know if you can hear. <laughs> let me know if you can hear it. Can you hear that? Sure, sure, sure. Yeah, I yes. Hear. Okay, cool. Yeah, I can hear it. So he says, uh, "Let me let me do that again because I prepared dialogue for this." Okay, give me give me two minutes to. Okay, we're giving you two minutes. minutes. Okay, go. here we go. Here we go. Dante will say, "Did you not know whom you've been fighting?" Divine blood courses through the veins of my allies. These are gods walking among men. So what does that make me, if not a man who walks among gods? 
So teleporting from the ethereal plane, Dante, covered in darkness, runs up against N while raising the Kampilan, his shadow blade, slashing down onto N's left side as white fire coats the sword of solidified gloom. Oh, I did a critical. Okay, great. Oh my god, uh, meant to be. He cuts him at the shoulder with a disarming attack. Extra oh attack. God. With his other weapon, da- Dante pierces his cane into a pressure point on N's right bicep as a second disarming attack. Pushing his cane through the arm and leaving it there. Bonus action, two weapon fighting. Dante then stoops low and with the blunt side of his campilan, swings at N's knees with a trip attack. Uh, so that's the campilan. Action surge. <laughs> While N is mid-air, Dante will slam the butt of the campilan down onto his stomach, pushing him into the floor with a pushing attack. And finally, as Dante looms over the body, he pulls his cane from N's arm. He then raises the campilan as more white flames <laughs> embrace the dark blade. He will look into N's eyes and say, <clears throat> I have spent the past two years in a constant battle for control. And what I have come to learn is that when I think I finally have it, it is quickly stolen from me. For your case, however, we are the thieves. As he slashes the burning Kampilan across N's chest, making sure to miss any vital organs so as to only leave him within an inch of his life. And turns. Nice. <laughs> Freaking nice. Yeah. When roll one awesome. more D8. Roll what? You critted on you critted on your first attack, so roll one more D8. No, no, it. I think it automatically does that. Um, I only see a. Three man, like a one d eight for your combat superiority. Ah, for the combat superiority, that's correct. Yeah. Okay. Oh my god, dude. Oh my god, I'm shaking. <laughs> Five. Let's okay. go. Ladies and gents, Dante dealt two hundred and forty six. Yeah! Holy crap! Let's go! Let's go! Dante will then s- step Smited. away. <laughs> Dante will step away and uh, let the the rest uh, take over the Order of the Gauntlet. Oh, they only there to stop them, right? To hold them down. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah! My goodness, guys. Let me calculate your total. damage total as a party. Crazy. <laughs> guys, as a party, in one turn, you dealt... I'll, I'll put it here. Party damage... You dealt a total of 641 damage as yeah. a party. What the actual fuck? <laughs> <laughs> oh my <Dude>. god. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm so hyped. <laughs> I'm shaking. Wow. You guys are crazy. Okay, so. <clears throat> yeah, N is unconscious from that series of attacks from everyone in the party. And. Yeah, like, all of the demons, they realize that their master just got defeated, and they're running all the fuck away. But you don't expect that to happen with the hobgoblins and the orcs. It's just in their nature to fight till the death, so they're actually staying. And you guys kind of like to spend the rest of the time fighting them off. We don't have to play that out. Mm -hmm. Uh, One of the hobgoblins, though, looks like from really really far away he's casting ice storm in the area where n is looks like seemingly um intentionally Mm -hmm. and then yeah with that happening it ends up that n is dead because of that ice storm what yeah we killed him oh i want to keep him alive and kill him after again <laughs> Deados. Oh oh. Yeah. Also, I wanted Dante to talk to him. Fuck. 
I got Calder spell it! Shit! I don't yeah, he's Calder's far spell. away. He's like yeah, he's far away. Ish. We must tear the mask off and confirm he's not a Dante clone. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I'll give you the chance to do that. So you tear the mask off and... Oh. Yeah, I think we can show the actual photo of N now. How is it? Can you... Can you upload it, my dude? Ah, uh, Sigi. Interesting. His actual face. Wait, yeah. uh, isn't it a bald dude? Yeah, he's an elf. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, he's a bald he's, elf dude. He's a bald elf Do I have that? I uh, think do. But anyways, yeah. yeah, he appears to be a bald elf dude. He looks really metal <laughs> as fuck. <laughs> he looks metal. <laughs> metal. He's metal as fuck. Uh, and you can see that his, what seems to be his spell book is what remains, along with all of his magic items that he had on hand. Oh. Yeah. And then, yeah, that seems to be the end of N's life. The end, the end of N. The end of N. What a, what a title. Yeah. yeah. The end of N. <laughs> but Arturo, on the other hand, is a bit... Um, upset by the fact that Anne is dead, and he tells you all why. He says that, oh no, it's most likely that he was ordering his minions to kill him if he ever died. And then, oh. yeah, he basically shares that there's an 8th level spell called Clone. Yeah. And he's worried yeah. that that's probably why that happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, what happened? Wait, hold up, what's going on? My 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 reptilian brain can't keep up what's happening. <laughs> he's, he's a clone. The minute he was killed, his soul probably transferred to a backup clone somewhere. He's I don't know. Yeah, I yeah. He'd rather he's die than boy. be captured alive. Yeah, it's smart boy. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> That's how it is. <laughs> but then Arturo says though, at least this means we have time now. And taking a look at our um, and spell book and the magic items he left behind, he's saying as well that this will be an opportunity for us to strike at him while he's at his weakest. Mm. Yeah, and then he basically says that you can leave that to the Order of the Gauntlet and also Arturo himself, because the Art of the Gauntlet really have beef with N, because, you know, he's killing Celestials and shit. Mm. Yeah, I look at, I look at my boys and I'm like, I'm gonna take a day off from that one. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna oh, fight yeah. leave, I don't wanna fight him again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Flint, Flint Iron Fist walks up to you. He's a hill dwarf looking kind of fella with a yeah. beard. Yeah. yeah. Then he says, uh, Right. Don't worry about it, Fatal. We'll take care of that son of a bitch. Oh, I love I love your your dwarven accent, dude. <laughs> that's what that's the dwarven accent I want every time I try to do it. <laughs> I like so I just like kind of like kneel down the ground. Yeah, of course. Like even though he wished that we got everything back, like Arturo, like all the resources back, I'm still winded. You know. <laughs> And I'm like, I look at Dante and Rico and everyone else, and they'd say, So, uh, what now? What now? Go yeah. home. It's what now? <laughs> Precisely. Much yeah. like you said, we ought to take a vacation. Yeah. <laughs> that we really need to do. And other than that, some of you have some unfinished business, some with family. And actually, no, actually everybody with family mostly, now that I think about it. <laughs> some unfinished business with family. And, you know, other things that you want to do. I, so, will, I will help I will, uh, Fiona, you know, like collect uh, Alcaras and, you know, like... Ah, okay. Maybe we can start there then. So... Alcaras and Fiona, you actually notice that both of them aren't in the battlefield anymore after they, after you all like cleared out the um, hobgoblins and the orcs, and yeah, you assume, because like I realized that there wasn't enough time for you all to collect um, Alcaras's magic items because you only had a minute to drink all of your stuff and recover, so he still actually has all of his stuff. And then, basically, he used the cube to 
just get out of there. And Fiona kind of like left a note saying that we'll be heading back to our homeland. And you can find us there if you ever need to talk to us. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay. I would have sent like a battalion to hunt them down if like without that communication. So that's good. <laughs> Not it. <laughs> She she's made it very clear that she was gonna bring him home, and she's sticking true to that. Okay. Yeah. And then... that's not the stronghold. Like we should, you know, I don't know. Do we have to piss on it to claim it as our castle now, or mm -hmm. like what's the <laughs> what's the you procedure? Certainly, you certainly could. <laughs> no, but seriously though. But seriously though. So after all of the enemies are defeated or ran away, um, this fort is basically yours now. Like you can strip it of all of its resources or occupy it if that's a thing that you want to do. Arturo in particular is actually taking the time to look at all of the inventory and make a decision from there. <laughs> but yeah. Basically, like, if you guys want to have this as a territory in the Shadowfell, then you can also do that. I tell my party members, I think, you know, as a memorial of our teamwork and our victory here, we should claim this castle and name it the, you know, the four, the four Mithalar Killers or something like that. <laughs> the four Mithalar Killers? Because too long? Or no, too short. Or I, too short, if you look at it. The four I think, the we can, I think that's a nice name. I think we can workshop the the title, yes. We, we could always acronym <laughs> it. Like, you know, that's, that's pretty modern. Yeah. <laughs> Just make an acronym out of it. So it's like the F, F what they call it? Uh, not bad. Not bad. Yeah. The what? <laughs> Dante's just confused. <laughs> the acronym, Dante. It's an acronym. You know? I, I know what an acronym means. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't see which part you don't get. <laughs> Dante just he like does. walks away and goes to work. Yeah, <laughs> and that was the smartest person I just convert to it. I know, I know. Man, the idiots can act like real smart ass once in a while. The same. I know, right? Coming from a guy I with know, Fatal, in. like, it's okay, Fatal. I once know a half orc that had a brilliant idea of infiltrating a cult. But then his idea was to take their clothes because it was nice instead of, you know, the general idea. Yeah, I feel like, <laughs> but like Fatal like kind of takes about for a minute. Mm, I have a feeling I know that orc. <laughs> Where he died. <laughs> Not from this lifetime anyways. <laughs> God damn it, you guys. <laughs> Alright, so, okay. Yeah, so this fortress can be yours, and yeah, you get... We can say that during the downtime for here until whenever, you guys will set that up yourselves if you want to. And yeah, you can create like a permanent um, teleportation circle there so that you can Ooh, yeah. teleport and or plane shift to that location. Oh yes. yeah, we do that. Yeah. Fenrir will just say, look mom, I got a place in the shadow fell. <laughs> 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 and then she'll be like, uh, I'm so proud of you. <laughs> so proud of you, honey. Right Give around the neighborhood, head. too. <laughs> <laughs> and look, mom, I also defeated a bully. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude, he really was a bully, though. My God. And... And she and she glosses over the fact you have like four other roommates. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there you go. All right, so yeah, okay. You guys go back to the material plane. This is probably like a ten day right after all of that happened. So it's now the twenty ninth of Jesus Christ. Where's my dates? I forgot now. The twenty ninth of... of August. <laughs> I can the 29th never... or no sorry the 27th of Eliasis yeah Sina will make oh. her new forge and the new fortress yes you could certainly do that Sina there's enough time for that 
then enough sir you know, you should go back to your dad and like tell him like it is you know like <laughs> I invented this armor. I took over a fortress. Like, you like the, you the what they call it? It's almost nighttime here, right? Yeah. Oh, fuck that. It's not good for my skin. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stay no, in the other fortress. for your skin. There's no sunshine here. Like, there's no UV rays. It's good. Like, <laughs> bro, it'll be too oh cold God, for me. Seriously. <laughs> it'll be too cold for me. Care. We don't yeah. get vitamin D, Rafi. <laughs> <laughs> I need my vitamin D. In Toral, that... there's no such thing as vitamin D. Oh, oh uh, shit. <laughs> nah, just kidding. Maybe there isn't. Maybe there isn't. Uh, no, maybe there isn't. We never know. Alright, so, yeah, Cinnabar, you can set up your forge maybe in the oh, fortress and maybe elsewhere too. If you, if you really want it there. Just not a good idea to stay there long term because you'll start to feel a sense of despair. But nice to forge there every now and then. She has multiple also, branches, you know. She has a franchise. Has a multiple... yeah. yeah, she has a franchise. <laughs> you have one in Shadowfell, you have one in uh, Toriel. The Imperial got... Plane, yeah. and like, you could also franchise in Warrior's Rest. Like, the souls of the warriors there just like fight forever. So they'll need weapons to like beat each other forever. <laughs> it sounds so exhausting, man. Just fight each other all the time. Yeah. Not for them. You've got the style. <laughs> You've got That's the tech style. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Sinus Enterprise. Yes. <laughs> the Enterprises. You, know. uh, you got the Bishop Sports like supports uh, this. You got the tech style. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god. Now that you was stuck in my head too, Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Look what you've done, Sean. <laughs> ah, my god, it's already playing in my head. <laughs> know, it's playing in my head too. Alright. <laughs> oh All right. my god. Alright, continuing Cinnabar's epilogue. So... <laughs> <laughs> no, why would you say that? No. Oh no, the cocaine should be nice as well, my head too. We Orange. offer excellent and no, quality shut up, shut service. Up, shut up, man. <laughs> it's, it's mixing in my head. Okay, okay, okay. Mash up. Pulling it back, pulling it back. Jesus Christ, stop, guys, stop. Stop it, stop it. Uh, oh, let's, right. let's, let's watch Lena tell off her dad, come on. Yeah, come on, cut, stop, stop, Yeah, yeah, stop, okay, stop, okay. okay, so anyways. <laughs> In a bar. So you have you have defeated and uh, you've you've gained renown in certain organizations. Even though you're technically not part of it, but they recognize you for the deeds that you've done. Duratia also thanks you for helping Rico and everyone else deal with the threat that's been killing the Celestials. And in a way, even though you didn't get the guy who killed um, Abdiel, you got the guy who was basically the one who ordered his death. So, yeah. There is some kind of revenge that happened for you. <clears throat> and then, actually, I'll ask Sina, do you want to go and see... What's his name? Um, do you want to go and see Alcaras and Fiona, or do you want to go straight home to your family and end there? All right, I think she'll go to her fam. Okay. Wait, she's still chatting. Promise she'd see her brother and they'd go together. They'd go together. I'm not sure where you'd be going together, but okay. So you go head on over back to home, back to Koltar. Is it Koltar? Koltar, yeah. <laughs> and in Koltar, you wait for your brother. You like rendezvous in the tavern, the place where you kind of like talk before you went your separate ways. And then, yeah, your brother is like, Sina, it's been far too long. Tell me about all your adventures. And then, you know, the both of you kind of like catch up. You have an opportunity to say something to your brother if you want. Um, Sina, <laughs> Sina will uh, recount to um, her brother basically everything that's happened 
she she's so talkative and it it feels so natural for her that all these super um amazing adventures she's been on she says very casually in a really casual tone um and then she will sort of use this opportunity to tell her brother that um you know we can bring honor to the family um just like our fam uh just like what our father expected from us just not in the right way and then she pauses for a second and then she starts to share to him that actually our our line isn't exactly pure we're not like completely pure uh, it isn't a completely gold dwarf line and then she talks about like how um we are very distantly related <laughs> distantly related <laughs> to the red knight yes <laughs> and that shocks him as well and then he it just makes him laugh because he's like well then i guess that just makes us uh, not so dwarven after all but then he chuckles and says but you know what i don't think it matters i think that it's really nice that we aren't who we originally thought we were and that we're something more than what we thought we were and then he kind of like tells you about the things that he's been doing he was traveling around with another bard her name was alexariana mm. and uh, <laughs> yeah, along with her, she was traveling around with a woman named Linda. So yeah, mm. they were having their own series of adventures together, and she was he promoting her new album. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they even went on concerts together because all three of them were bards. So yeah, yeah. wow, <laughs> the barbed band, so they were called, and yeah. There you go. And yeah, the two of you finally muster up the courage after like a night's rest because it was the evening when you reconvened in the tavern. And then, yeah, now it's time to face your dad and, you know, say whatever you want to say to him. So do you want to head there directly or you want some time to prepare? Yeah, so she'll, she'll, they'll probably, we shall be done with like dwarven yoga super early um i'm i'm assuming her brother is also into dwarven yoga because they kind of realize like they're already like pretty short <laughs> short dwarves <laughs> like flexibility is actually good they need it um so <laughs> but they do get stares <laughs> from everyone else because this is a very traditional dwarven society um and then she says like there's really no putting this off i think we need to get this over with and then he says, I agree. I'll sing us a song as we head home. And then, yeah, he sings your favorite song, actually. Like, the song that the two of you kept on singing when you were younger. And when there were simpler times, heading on over there. Trying to prepare both of your hearts for this. And basically, he's giving you inspiration for the talk that's about to happen. Mm. So... There you go. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Alright. And then, Sina, you approach your family home, and it's as what it's as, it's as you remember it. Almost nothing has changed. The the like forge that you kept on working on when you were still your dad's apprentice. It's still there. It's still working. There's a couple of like new gear here and there though, but then for the most part it's still the same. You see the dining area where you ate with your family all the time and where you had your what I think was your final discussion with your family because what I recall is that that was happening over dinner or something and then that's when you left. <laughs> and um that leads me to, you also see the place where Earthshaper used to be stored. And yeah, it's been left untouched ever since you stole the weapon from your father. And then you know where to find your dad. You basically go to his quarters where he's preparing like a list of things that he's going to be forging for the next few weeks. And then 
there you see your dad. He's on his desk working. Um, yeah, working very hard. And then he kind of likes us uh, to the person who's entering, like, uh, yes, yes, come in, come in. Then he looks up and, like, he was about to say something, and then his expression was just, like, from from very businessman-like to a face of shock. And then it's quickly from a face of shock to, like, stern and, like, stone-faced. Then he's like, oh. Cinnabar. Uh, <laughs> Cinnabar will walk into the room. Um, she, she will do like a very traditional bow and she says, Hi, Dad. Um, and then she will pause and then she will say, If you need any help with making that list, I have a few suggestions for some items I've come across, some pretty interesting materials that could help. And then she like pauses and then she kind of like gets out um, Earth Shaper and she says, oh, and I've come to return this. And she lays Earth Shaper very gently on the desk. Yeah. And by the way, I am real um, And during this whole time, she's wearing her, um, the arm elf. She's oh. wearing the... <laughs> okay. What is she wearing? Oh, she's wearing the armor that she created. So she's ah, wearing okay. Forge Master's Resolve. I see. Okay. Okay. And right now, I am role-playing that he is pretty quiet. He's just looking at you, looking at Earth Shaper, and nods that you've come here to return it. <laughs> yeah, it's an awkward silence right now. He's looking at your brother as well, and your brother finally gets the courage to speak up as well and says, So, Dad... Uh, in my end, I was able to travel around the world with a famous, with not just one, but two famous bards. And we've made a name for ourselves. We're the Bard Band. We're known across all over the world. We've helped people in need. And we've done a lot of good in the world. Then, at this point, like, to break the silence, your mom kind of, like, walks in, sees this entire thing happening, <laughs> and then she's like, Oh, Sina! Honey, where have you been? <laughs> she sounds like all the titas whenever she casts virtual guardians. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> then, uh, Sina, what's the name of your brother again? Oh, I think it was, it was like another metal name. <laughs> it was <another> metal. <laughs> um, it was uh, clay. Ah, it was another okay. thing. Yeah, clay. Yeah, clay, bright steel. Then it says, "Clay, you've been so, you've been <laughs> gone for such a long time. I've been hearing all of your songs when it came here, mm -hmm. but you know those human bots, oh, uh, mm, mm, they can't imitate my son. No, no, no." <laughs> <laughs> and then. Um, Cinnabar's dad is like, can it, woman? Don't you realize that your, our two children just came back and they haven't even apologized? Uh oh. Oh my and... god. <laughs> <laughs> um, Cinna will uh, pat her mom's hand affectionately because she's really missed being with her mom. Um, and then she will say, um, Dad, I understand that I'm taking Earth Shaper was something like a mortal sin for our family. And I know we didn't carry out the Bright Steel name the way you wanted to, but I promise you, we carried it. Things and things that will bring so much honor to our name and i know clay has done the same and we may have not lived how you expected us to but i think we did even better than that and then she looks at uh clay and she's like clay you know what are the words <laughs> 
Yeah, and then Clay is just like reluctantly saying that I ran away too because I wanted to chase after my dream. I wanted to make you and Ma proud. I wanted our Bright Steel name to not just be about forging, but about music and art and love and life. That's what I did. And I come back to you now, and I, <laughs> I'm an artist. <laughs> I'm an artist, Dad. Yeah, and then he says, I come back to you now, and I will do not wish to end our relationship as father and son. <laughs> you wouldn't understand. <laughs> God damn it, you guys. And then, um, <laughs> your dad. He basically is still in a huff, and he says, That's not why I'm angry with the both of you. I'm angry with the both of you. And then he kind of like looks down, because I was worried. How would I have known if you'd have come back here? Think about how I felt. And then... He kind of like comes closer to the both of you now, and then he says, I'm proud that the both of you have done what you've done. However, the way that you've made me feel, I cannot forgive it unless I hear it from the both of you. Uh... Cinna looks at Clay, and Clay will look at Cinna, and they're doing the thing where like two siblings are sort of like, "Ikaw lang sa, ikaw lang sa," kind of like. And then your mom notices that and says, "Like, come on, the both of you. I know the both of you love your dad so much. Just do it already." <laughs> and Cinnabar, who is like at this point, point like level seventeen. Um, <laughs> Forge Cleric, and like, I'm assuming Clay is also a high level bard. Like, they immediately just sound like really sorry children, like, sorry, dad. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And he says, and I'm sorry too. Then he hugs both of you, and he says, I'm sorry for putting all that pressure on the both of you. <laughs> Progressive death. <laughs> oh my god. Alright. Yeah. And then he says yeah. to the both of you, I forgive both of you. And you're always welcome back in this household. Um, so it's like Sina and, and Clay will hug and then like it'll just be like a big like it's gonna be like a big family hug thing and then Sina will like say uh Sina will say like let's celebrate um as they're walking you can sort of like hear like I have so much to tell you I mean you know the stuff that we were making already now think of it like this and she's like talking about all the stuff that she learned with that um a uh, forge master in the shadow fell yeah, yeah. Um, Vin Diesel so she's talking about that yeah she's all the stuff that she learned about with Vin Diesel, Vin Diesel and she's like the important part is family um, <laughs> and then, so she's, so, she's she's walking away with it and then she's like oh and dad there's something about um the family tree I should talk about but let's talk about that later and then she'll like fade to black with like yeah. this like happy family moment yeah, and your dad is also taken aback. It's like you learned that from a from a giant, because mm -hmm. like you know the beef between dwarves and giants. Yeah, and he's like so taken aback by that, <laughs> but then he's willing to listen to all of the things that you learned, and you have a nice family dinner, and hey. you eventually talk about your lineage, and he is a bit surprised, but then he says that. He eventually thinks like, no, that does make sense, as he reads through all of the documents from the past ancestors. So, yeah. I mean, it does explain why we are so much taller than the rest of, like, the dwarves in town. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's it says, true. like, I don't know, 4 foot 11. <laughs> I'm <not> 5. <laughs> there you go. Uh, the height there. <laughs> oh god. Oh, <laughs> Alright. <laughs> 
Okay. So there you go, Suna. Yay! If you wanna participate in other people's as well, you can feel free to do so. Like their epilogue. Yeah, I'll just listen in then. Sure. All right. Gotcha. All right. Moving on to Fatal. So hey, bud. You there? Hello. I'm here. Yo, yo, yo. So. <laughs> Uh, first things first, right after that whole thing went down with N, you go back to the order of the gauntlet, HQ, and then Flint and all of the other people who you adventured with, they gave in a good word to their, to your leaders. And then what basically ended up happening is that they decided that it's time for you to be promoted. From now yeah. on, you, you will no longer be a White Hawk, which is like the third rank. Mm -hmm. You're going to be going up a rank. Now, you're a Vindicator. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. And with it, you pretty much have control over like a group of the Order of the Gauntlet yourself. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they're going to be like, basically, if we're talking mechanics-wise, a level 9 adventuring party. So yeah, you have that in your arsenal right now. So as they explain all of these things to me, and then I look at who's the leader? <laughs> I don't know my leader's name. <laughs> sure, let's give the leader a name. Let's so give the a name. Yeah, let's give the leader a name. So the leader's name is um well I don't Scott. really have a good name. Scott right Matthews. I'll, I'll, I don't freaking no, know. I'll go I'll go with Thoromir. Why not? Okay, Thor oh okay, okay, I'm oh, done with that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Get down with it. See, see? It's so, like, yeah. so I look at I look at Thoromir, um I put I put down my what do you call this, my hood, you know, showing my white hair. And yeah. then I said, Thoromir, I can't do this anymore. It's uh it's been a long time coming, but you know, I did what everything I could have wanted, but I just realized that there are just some things that are out of my control. You know, it's a different time now. Gods are they're popping off everywhere. Fighting that last guy. It's different. There's just there's always going to be someone stronger. That's the thing. There's always someone who will try to chase down and try to defeat. And I think it's time for me to just retire. And then I oh. kind of, I take off my armor and then show him that, you know, my veins are like lightning blue now. Like showing him that there are some consequences on casting like magical spells all the time, sacrificing the body and things like that. Mm. And, uh. you know, being old and all. And a sorcerer, because wizards technically they use like what they call this component shit sorcerers usually like you know they're born with it right yeah so so there's that kind of vulnerability vulnerability and then i tell him i i don't know how long i have after all of the battles i've been in adventures and things like that it took a toll on me back then and i i i held it for a long time i did but now i just want to spend time my friends, family, and everyone else. I think I've done my due. Don't you think, Thoromir? Yeah, and then Thoromir is regrettable that right after you got promoted, you're telling him this. But then he understands, and he says, Very well, friend. I understand. Thank you. It is not my place to force you to do what needs to be done. Uh, yeah. And he looks at the others and says, Do not worry. These ones, they will take your place. They will do what you did before them. Just nod quietly. Give my badge, code book, and everything. Yeah. And then all the other he equipment. Does, he does say, however, can I ask one thing of you, though, dear friend? What is it, Toromir? Can you train some of the older, some of the newer recruits? You don't have to do it regularly, just whenever you like. And then I just give him like a smirk. I said, no, no, Thoromir, I don't think I'll be doing that. But I know someone who can. Ooh. Then he says, 
Thank you. I will keep that in mind. I'm keeping the mace now. <laughs> yeah, and then he says, uh, Is that the only thing you're keeping? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you start putting your armor back on again. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I'll keep this armor. He can, he can do that. And then uh, I'm also going to keep this one, the, what do you call it? The robe of the Arc Magi. Yeah. Ooh, so I just, this. yeah. So I put on my commoner's clothes, you know, give the good old friends there a hug. And then, you know, grab my stuff from the locker and you know, like, <laughs> walk out. And then I I go to wherever... Ow, ow, fuck. I go wherever uh, Dante is. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, knock on his door. Whatever, wherever he is. Can we just do it? Like, can we just finish this? Like, can we just go through all the friends and stuff? Yeah, sure, sure. Do it. Go ahead. Yeah, so I, I go to Dante and I'm like, Hey there, Dante. I was hang on, I was actually like thinking uh uh at the end of everything I okay, Dante invited everyone like to uh his oh, home. Okay, we can do that. Yeah, okay, we can do that. Just, yeah, okay, we can just I just I just do the the rest and stuff. See. Like, so oh, okay. Yeah, okay. So during that party, okay. Yeah, no, Wait, but, what uh, about what about like Fatal's like report? Didn't the didn't the order like send them over to like you know, make right. our report on the red knight. Like, we'll, we'll get there. We'll get there. You know, I'm yeah. just, I'm just going with each one of you. You know what I mean? Uh, okay, so yeah. we're done tasting. I'll just do in the party. Yeah. So okay. I go, I go to Cinnabar's place. Yeah. You know, wherever it is. I don't know where it is, by the way. Where is it? <laughs> it's in Kaltar. It's uh, Kaltar. So does it require me to climb and stuff? That would be pretty cool. You know, training montage, climbing <laughs> up mountains, and shit. <laughs> right. So I reach, I reach all the way in Cinnabar's place, you know, probably she told me at some point where she lives, and um, I don't know if she's here. She's typing, okay. Let her type. Oh, there you go, there. Like, it's like, yay! Uh, Sana, it's good to see you here, and this is a beautiful place you live, with family and all. Uh, I have a gift for you, and then I hand her over the mace. Whoa. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, when I see all of that dwarven ale party, so it's like, well, this is very uh, revolutionary. <laughs> oh, <laughs> do you, oh, oh Dusty, like, did did you did you did you just come on the wagons on, on the on uh, the? I, I kind of walked here. <laughs> to to but there's regular tr transportation coming in and out. Yeah, kinda don't have money for that. Kinda what? forget to ask <laughs> Level 17 to ask for my what do you call it for my severance fee of to retire. <laughs> so I just I just have like covered clothes, like covered pants and like boots with holes on them. Yeah, oh no. And then my oh, clothes. Buddy. Yeah, so anyway, um yeah, I grab an ale and then like, you know, drink it, eat a bit. And then, like, I asked Sana to talk to her in private, and I, I'd say, Sana, I'd always, like, think that you've, uh, there's something for you. And then I hand her over to me, self lightning and thunder. Thunder. Sana's like, are you sure about this? This has been, this is, you've had some stories with this thing. Are you sure? Yeah, I did have good stories with it. But the thing is that it's always been a dwarven friend of mine a long time ago. Never owned it mm -hmm. myself. So I think it's better uh, if I return it to its rightful owners. Uh, Sino will look at it. Uh, she will admire its craftsmanship, and then she'll say, "I'll make sure that whoever um, wields this in the future will have to be just as good as you are to handle it." Mm. Oh. Find someone who will die. So it's going to be a while. And protecting other people. <laughs> Oh. And then Sina like... will will let uh, her aunts, uh, her her aunts and the moms, like her mom, know, and she will be like fully kitted out and like super <laughs> cool armor and stuff. Okay. <laughs> and like new boots. Okay. And then with that in mind, knowing that the 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 maze is a good place to be, um, kind of pack it up. You know, still have a couple of places to go, Sina. A couple of you know things to do. Oh, by the way, you're going to a party. Wait, Dante's party. Where are you? Where? Where are you going? 
she's like, yeah, I was, I was, I mean, I, w I guess I was just going to like find a teleportation circle and get there. And then <laughs> yeah. so, we, we go there, uh, but after this, uh, plan, were you soul searching and things like that, you know, <laughs> uh, the, party, uh, so the, the party. So you're there, going bro. to the party first? Yeah. Or are you soul searching first? We can do that, so I can just do it all in one go, you know? <laughs> all right. So, uh, you know, are you gonna, mine first. <laughs> are you, are you going to walk there again? Or? Well, no, no. <laughs> Since it's that teleportation circle, yeah. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, so Sinna will, uh, will, will give a, a fatal a ride. Okay, there we go. So we'll, we'll just skip go. to it, then the party, so I can just interact with everyone all in one go there. Uh, okay, sure, right. sure, sure. No problem, no problem. Okay, so let's move on to Rico. So, Rico, uh, what's the first order of business you want to do, mate? I will collect my wife who I stashed in the red tower. <laughs> Just casually collecting my wife, you know? Yeah, from what a freeze. <laughs> <laughs> oh Alright, so you bring her back from there, back to the material plane. I guess yeah. back to Baldur's Gate, where her be base of operations are. Yeah, and I, uh, I basically just wait until the day she is, uh, you know, uh, until the baby is coming. And I tell her also, uh, I also share with her that, uh, Rebecca, I've been having some ideas here. Um, I was thinking that perhaps when the child is born, I will devote the rest of my time, apart, of course, from handling the business and running the temple, I will take a break from adventuring and raise the child, at least for the first 10 years of their life. Oh, wow, 10 years. Okay. I... I am going to be a father now, and I should make some sacrifices for the child that I wish to bring, and that will be it. I will only return to adventuring unless the city we live on is literally on fire, so... <laughs> oh, man. Okay. Yeah. All right, sure. And then your wife is thrilled to hear that. She's like, oh, finally, dear. It's been far too long that you've been away. You know how many months it's been, yes? I do understand. And I had a lot of time to contemplate this decision. So here I am. And unless a comet starts crashing down on us, I will be doing zero adventuring and helping you raise the baby. Yeah, and then she appreciates that. And other than that, she also wants you to help out with business because yeah she was away for a long time there's a lot of catching up to do that is true so, yes yes so yeah okay i shall then, use my powers to scare all opposition and make our business the supreme <laughs> company <laughs> no i'm kidding uh, i won't do that <laughs> <laughs> that should be easy given how many allies you have. <laughs> so there you go. All right. Um, we'll say that your child gets born after the party because I'm pretty sure the party will happen sooner rather than later. Okay. So we'll get to that at a later time. Okay. Is there anything else you want to do before that, though? Uh, I also want to visit Fiona and Alcaraz. Okay. Do you want to come with somebody? Like any of the party mates. Um, I will. Okay, Rebecca can come. Okay, great. Uh, yeah. I will invite Sina to to come as well if she wants to face him. And uh, actually, does any one of the party members want to speak to him too? Like, I think sure, I would. Uh, yep, you, you have time to yeah. communicate with each other. Yeah, like who who else wants to come? You know, let's. Let's check and see how he's doing. Sina will come, and then, like, before they head out, um, yeah. she's going to say, like, oh, uh, boss, I mean, we go. Uh, before we go over there, I, I have something for you and for Miss Rebecca. And then oh. she, gives him a she gives him a box. Oh, 
I open the box. What is it? Um, so you pull out what looks like a chain mail onesie for a baby. Oh. But it's <laughs> chain mail. I don't know how you feel about that. Oh. <laughs> it's a onesie. Um, and she's like, it's for the baby. It'll give uh, the baby plus three bonus to AC. <laughs> and <he's> like, <laughs> uh, you, you basically... Rika's eyes just brighten. It's just the red knight part of him. Like, oh my god, my baby and armor. This will be amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it's made out of mithril for comfort. It's made out of mithril for comfort. There's oh no chafing. Um, <laughs> and, it, you know, like, it's dribble proof. Uh, it's waterproof Dude. for the dribble. Oh my god, this is... <laughs> The sweetest gift anyone's ever given me. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thanks. You know what? While I've been at Coltar back at home, I've just run into so many baby nieces and nephews. I'm really kind of thinking of making up a new line. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Wow. Still Still think I, you see. It's in the <laughs> I know, right? My goodness. So business minded. That is a brilliant idea, and we will we will talk about that after we deal with uh, with our um, PTSD ridden enemy. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, <laughs> God damn it! Nice one, Cinnabar. You get inspiration for that crazy I, idea. I, I asked Cinnabar, I asked Cinna, by the way, is this baby proof? Like, what if my baby tries to, like, chew on it or, like, accidentally jumps off its crib? Like, will it be fine? Well, it should be fine. It's a plus three bonus to AC, <laughs> and you know what? <laughs> you know, just I, guess, yeah. I have a helm. I'm working on a helm to make sure that, like, the baby's head is okay, so I have a baby helmet. <laughs> that's, a, that's a great idea. Yeah, you know, my father used to drop me on my head once, and I, I was never the same, so I'm trying to avoid that. <laughs> Oh my god. This is so silly, god damn it. Mm. A bib of displacement. <laughs> Fuck. God damn it. Alright, alright. Let's pull okay. it back. Let's pull it back, everybody. <laughs> okay, so Rico and Cinnabar. Okay, I guess the two of you are the ones heading over to Alcaros and Fiona. So you go on over to a foresty area somewhere near the Neverwinter Woods. And over there, you see, well, I mean, first of all, you see a whole bunch of wood elves. It's like a wood elf community. There's lots of mm. druids. <coughs> There's, like, rangers and all these other things. Um, yeah, and then, uh, yeah, you see Alcaras and Fiona over there. And Alcaras is looking better. He's not... Like, when you saw him originally, and every time you fought him, he looked really pale, and also, like, you know, scowling, and just not looking really good. Uh, right now, he's looking okay. Like, his skin is a little less pale. He's not looking as grim as when you saw him the last time. And, um, yeah, right now, Fiona is kind of, like, what seems to be just nursing him back from what seems to be like a training session okay. and then yeah you they notice you and you notice them they're kind of like just sitting down outside of what seems to be a training ground and then um fiona says hail but alcaras just looks at you all the both of you and just nods we it's almost yeah. It's it's almost like he's kind of like focusing on something else right now. So I, yeah. yeah, I I greet back hail to Lady Fiona and just return a nod, you know, I'm just mirroring their behavior and then uh I tell Fiona I wish to discuss a few things with Alcaras, but I want to know if you think it's a good decision for me to bring up details about his time with well with the fiends that he worked with fiona says i think he's had enough time to process it i helped him through his thoughts and 
he's a lot better now mentally and emotionally than he was when we last saw each other. Then he looks at Alcaras and asks him in a soft and kind voice, Alcaras, do you want to talk to Rico and Cinnabar over here? And then he says, yeah, I think I do. Hey. Oh, Fenrir got go. Oh no! I will just type what Fenrir will do. Oh, then I had a good moment for you. But okay, yeah, sure, no problem. Thanks for the being here. Boom. Night. <laughs> uh, night. <laughs> Alrighty. So continuing on, Alcaras uh, says, "I think it's time." Then. You can kind of like just sit next to where he's sitting right now. Hmm. I, uh, I ask him, uh, can you tell me what exactly happened from your perspective after I disappeared? Why were you even there on the day I disappeared into the Shadowfell? I can't remember. Yeah, and then he says that, well, what happened for me was that the last thing I recall when I was younger is that you were going to go to the island to deal with some missed threat that was happening in the island. That was the last time I saw you until centuries later when our village was attacked by orcs with, and then looking at Cinnabar with the weapons that the Bright Steels were forging. And then looks away from Cinnabar back to Rico. Then he, he says, after that, I was just praying, praying that you were still alive, praying that you would come to our aid. And I saw you. I saw a silhouette of you that was turning your back on us. And in the, and after that happened, N appeared, and N made the orcs go away. He killed all of the orcs. He made them disappear from our lands. And that's when I met N first, and he told me that if you do not want these sorts of things to happen to you ever again, then follow me, become strong, and so I did. Then she looks at Fiona, he looks at Fiona and says, But Fiona, when she casted that spell on me during our fight, it made me see what really happened. It turns out that an implanted memories in me then he goes into detail about like what he discovered that there's this spell called modify memory mm -hmm. yeah and that one moment in time where he was at his most desperate he saw a memory that wasn't actually there so he recounts his tale again what he was actually seeing was N who was there. He was there the whole time. The silhouette was was him. It wasn't the Red Knight. And then from there he thought that you're the one that you're the one who turned his back on him, but it turns out it was N. And then N on top of that asked him to help him out. And so that he will never be weak ever again. And basically, like, throughout the rest of his life, before you came back into the picture, was led down the dark path, being coerced into thinking that the gods have abandoned you. Which is, I mean, depending on how you look at it, it's technically what happened. The gods did abandon him in a way. But it wasn't the full picture. And so... And that, like he was led down to that path, he believed in N, and he did get a lot stronger under N's wing. So it's a lot of positive reinforcement. Mm. And it didn't help that 
when he figured out that you're alive. That, you know, his last memory of you is that you turned your back on him. And then on top of that, you're just casually walking up to him being buddy-buddy and stuff. So, and pretending not to know on top of that. Like, what he thought was that you were pretending not to know what you did. So, yeah. It just built up more and more rage in him. Mm. Yeah. He felt good about making Abdiel fall because it was his way of getting back at you for all the pain that he thought you caused you. That he thought you caused him. And then, now that the rug was pulled under him, that all of that was actually false information, false memories. He decided that he's not going to follow N anymore, and that in fact he'll be hunting him down until he's killed N once and for all. Yep. I after he tells everything, I eventually realized like so what you did to Abdiel, that was that was fully your own will and not someone else's. And then I stand up and basically, you know, as a power move, I just activate my wings and just, you know, fly over him, hovering above him. And I just tell him, you think the gods, just because the gods abandoned you, it gave you an excuse to... Uh, to take a dark path. Yes, you were fooled into do doing so, but still, I too was abandoned by the gods when I was trapped in the dread plane. And yet, here I am. I still made the choice to become a force of good. Now that you realize the error of your ways, I hope you spend the rest of your days correcting your mistake Killing a celestial being that is not something everyone can come back from. So, I don't know what to do with you, but may Tempest and the other gods have mercy on your soul. And hopefully the deeds you will do in the next days will gain you their favor. Yeah. He doesn't say anything to that. He just looks at his sword and has a look of determination on his face. And uh, I ask uh, Sina, like, do you have anything to say, Sina? Sina actually is uncharacteristically quiet during this whole thing. Um, and she is very, um, uh, you can see that her hands are clenched into fists. And then, like, eventually she'll just sort of, like, release uh, her clenched fists. And she says, there's been too much destruction already. And while, if I didn't take the time out to be with my family and really think about what happened, I would have happily killed you. Um, but... Abdiel is already gone, and there's nothing you can do about it. But I do know that as a planetar, he knew that one more death wouldn't have made a difference. So, um, but she looks at him like when she says it with disgust, like she's still mad at him, obviously, but she just knows that she can't kill him, but she's still mad at him. And she says, may you find peace. He's a bit surprised by what he said. And then he just nods. Yeah. Uh, you kind of notice because you have really high passive perception, and so do you, Rico. That when you said that, you know, may you find peace, he feels like a sense of serenity from that. So, yeah. There you go. And then, is that the only thing that you two want to do? Because um, he doesn't really have much else to say. He said his case, and he's focused on 
basically training right now. So oh, yeah. yeah. We don't have to like role play it all out, but Rico will try to extract information from them, like give him as much like military and strategic details that he knows about and so that Rico can relate to Dante and the gauntlet later on. Yeah, sure. No problem there. And yeah, you don't have to worry about that. Um, whatever information you gather moving forward, I'll just say that both the Harpers and the Order know about that through you when you have okay. the time to tell them. Yeah. Okay, nice. nice. Through the party, um, basically. Like, whatever info any of you gather, so don't worry about that. Okay. Alright. Before the both of you leave, however, he tells you that if we ever come across Dante again, tell him I'd like to thank him in person. That's all he says. Very well. I will. And right. then, yeah, I, <laughs> I, 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 I deactivate my wings and you know walk along with Jen. I don't want to like fly away and leave her. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna be like yeah. power move, just fly away. No, wait, Sina's there. <laughs> yeah, Sina's so back there. <laughs> Sag. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay, and then, ah oh man, if only Fenrir were here. So I'll read what he said. So Fenrir will visit Lady Bianca and tell her about the fight. And also tell her more about his life and how he grew up. Aww. He also tells her about Teddy and how he spent time with him and suddenly disappeared. Sag. He then looks to the sky and shouts, Are you not entertained, father? He asks what was the point of all that. He asks what Malar plans for him, or should he call him Teddy? So he basically just waits for the next set of challenges Malar plans to throw at him, and just says, for everything that was, thanks. For everything that will be, bring it on. Yeah. And then finally, as he goes to the party, he just thanks everyone for the time and adventure. He notices the baby and cuts a piece of his claw and makes it into a necklace and gives it to the gift that the baby has a gift. This choker will give the baby plus two to strength. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, what kind of strong baby is this dude? This oh, baby's no. already a demigod, you know, and he has all these <laughs> magic. <laughs> I know. Let's just do it, man. Born to be great. Yeah. Alright, there you go. Oh uh, man, if he was here, I would have told him that Teddy basically invited him to an adventure together with him. Aww. No, no, no. Just tell us the details as well because Wayne's recording this at least. Fenrir oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. yeah, basically, Fenrir, after shouting out and asking what else he's got planned for him and whether he's entertained, first off, he replies that, yes, it was indeed entertaining to see that my spawn has become so strong. Then, after he says, what else does he have planned for him? He says, come with me on an adventure, son. I think it's time that you've dealt with things far greater than whelps. <laughs> and then, yeah, after that, like this after the party and everything, he goes along with his father and unfortunately not his mom. He still has, she still has business in her dread plane. But yeah, the two of them go off adventuring, not in the material plane, but in planes far, far away from here. Mo fighting monsters that are only in your wildest dreams. <laughs> so there Ooh. you go. Oh, okay. Sugi, bye, Sean. GG, well played. Thank oh, you, thank DM. You. Ooh. No problem. Night, guys. My Night. pleasure. Night. Alrighty, so it's down to Dante. Um, so Dante, what happens, my dude? We're back at the old uh, Maro house, but since the fire, it's quite, kind of been like converted into a business, so no one lives there anymore. Uh, so the first floor of the house, uh, 
is made out of like uh, stone and tile. And the second floor used to be wood, but now uh, it's just it, it's not there anymore. So it's just one floor, and the Maros converted it into a printing press. So there, like they they usually print you know the typical newspaper for <laughs> the neighboring uh, hamlets and towns. Uh, they live in between. Uh, what is it? I don't know how to pronounce Jewel Cone and Sicomber. <laughs> ah, okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, somewhere around uh, that area. Uh, and then yeah, Dante. Oops, Dante tells the party like I guess through sending and whatever. Uh, that maybe after like how many days? Like how many ten days? Uh, they're invited to go there to, you know, catch up and like also debrief, I guess. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sure. So yeah, um, when the party goes there, uh, but before the party goes there, uh, Dante will prep the house uh, by casting the spell Mordenkainen's Magnificent Mansion on the front door. So that when oh, they shit. open the door, it opens into what the Marrow house used to look like. Uh, and uh, I guess he has some time to talk with Arturo uh, during that moment. Yeah, sure. He says, uh, it's been a long time since we've been here. Can you open the map? <laughs> oh, sorry. Open the map. Do you have it loaded? Hold on. Yeah, I do. Okay. Hey. Loading it. Nice. There you go. Maro Manor. Yeah, this is uh, Casa Maro. <laughs> Alright, put your figures there. Holy crap, guys. Nice. Yeah. Where is it? Uh, it's still loading. But... It's in Albear. Yeah. Ah! I have to go back to Albear. Yeah, so like Dante and Arturo will have a moment um, as Arturo says it's been a while since we've been here Dante says uh, indeed I often I often find myself visiting this place as soon as I learn the spell uh, dude this isn't updated <laughs> wait it's not? Oh, no, 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 no. I'm so sorry hang on hang on, hang on. let me let me send it yeah. to you. Uh, yes, yes, oh, what's yes, happening? Yes. Where where are we? The dark one or the white one? It's in con. I don't know. This is the wrong map. I downloaded the unupdated one. I put I'm it so in sorry, conversations. But... Alrighty. Oh my god. There are <laughs> dead bears and cheetahs all over the place. Dead bears what? and cheetahs. <laughs> So the dark the dark side is basically second floor and the ah, okay. yeah the other the left one is first floor. Nice, nice, nice. But the, is this updated? I thought it's not updated. Uh, no, it's Lincoln's not updated. updating yeah, it. Done. But yeah, Dante's gonna continue nice. walking around and then uh he's gonna say I Here we go, here we go. He's just going to say, I figured that when I learned the spell, this was the place that would have made the most sense for me to create. Yeah, uh, and then he says, did. <laughs> and then he says, you and I think alike. My mansion also looks like this. But it looks different from that. And he's basically describing it as the old style so that we can make use of ah, that picture. Okay. <laughs> there you <Got> go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, Dante goes around and then they just reminisce a little bit, right? As they go through the rooms, I guess. And then they're pointing at like the paintings on the wall and. Uh, the figurine, the horse figurines littered in the living room because uh, Dante's grandmother loves horses. <laughs> so 
she just collects a lot of horse figurines. Koshi is like running around uh, because she also misses this place. So she's just, you know, she goes into the kitchen and then uh, looking for food, but there's no food there. But yun. Um, uh, then after some time, Dante will ask Arturo, it's like, you've been gone for a while and um, that made me worry. I was, I was scared that something might have happened to you. And then he's pretty straightforward about it. Well, something did actually happen to me. And then he kind of recounts his what seems to be a really long-winded battle with N. It's like a battle of wits. So he and N... So the first time that he realized something was wrong with N was when he ratted out your family. Yeah. So, yeah, he tells you about that. And that, you know, there must have been some kind of reason for that. He was hoping that his student was just hungry to become higher rank but as he dig dug deeper it turns out that the demons that Arturo was after was also affiliated with and mm. yeah so the whole thing was orchestrated from the beginning was and then he's was N like uh Tempting Dante's parents to deal in dark magic, was that it? And then Artero says, it's really difficult to say. I do not know if it was N who was ordering that, or if it was just the demons. Because it's in the demons' nature to tempt people anyways. Mm -hmm. Got yeah. It. yeah, so there's, it's impossible to say. But one thing is for certain, he knew that the demons that our family was co was being coerced with, that was an opportunity for him to rat out our family mm. and for him to gain rankings among the high harpers. And speaking of the harpers. If someone like that can easily become part of such organization and for them to be so clueless up until the end, how, how do we know that there are others like him within the group? How do we know if we can continue to trust the rest. And then Arterio chuckles and says, There is no way to know for certain, Dante. And then he says also, That's why that, that's the reason why I do not tell my. That's, that's the reason why he's been in the dark, basically. Mm. That he hasn't reported any of what he's been doing so far. And basically telling nobody not even you that you know his activities has been leading to this point and he says i could not tell you because i do not know who i could trust even and he kind of like stops himself for a sec even your master i'm not so sure i do not have reason to doubt him but at this point, I don't know who I can trust. Mm. I guess such is the such is the result of creating creating an organization that several powerful wizards can join. It is only a matter of when or if people start turning on each other. And 
and then he kind of like um he says that the only thing that still eludes me is why why did he turn to this path i could not ascertain that do you but still it does not matter oh yeah okay so do he continues still... it doesn't it does not matter <laughs> But it does not matter, for he has fallen too far into the darkness, my foolish student. Hmm. Yeah? Well... Uh, do you want to say something? Uh, no, Dante moves on from uh, this conversation a bit, and then he just says, Well, I would like to put that behind me for now. I would like to rest my brain. <laughs> And it should be shortly now that uh, the rest of the group should be arriving. I wonder where they are. And then <laughs> cue, <laughs> cue, the cue, <laughs> cue all of you guys arriving. It's like, uh, hey. Hey, guys. Hello. Never been here. Yeah. My great Arturo, just like Arturo, so... Nice to meet you, Master Turo. <laughs> and then he says, why are you calling me Master? I don't know, it just seems like it. I mean, Dante is smart and all, so... If you're smarter than him, you could be a Master, right? <laughs> and then he kind of like tells you, don't be so formal, young man. Just call me Arturo. And I look at Dante, I already like this old bud. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Dante, like, you know, asks you guys to, like, if you have any heavy bags or, like, coats or whatever, you can put it in, uh... Oh, yeah, no, I, uh... Did you just the wrap sack I have? It's, it's as big as you! <laughs> <laughs> God damn it. Uh, no, there are servants that are, like... They, nice. There are servants walking around. It's They're just invisible people, but, like, you can see they're, like, coattails, I guess? Like hovering, mm -hmm. it's like an invisible clothing that's mm -hmm. walking around. So they're I'm serving like, you whatever. So fascinated by this six like ah oh, magic. Yeah. I could never understand how it works. <laughs> no, Are you no, kidding? Me? <laughs> sorry, sorry. Exactly, dude. He's yeah. a sorcerer. So it's like he's born with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh Rico, as you enter with uh, Rebecca, if you brought Rebecca, Dante will Yeah, Dante will be like no, oh. Dante mm -hmm. will be like Oh right, uh, Bishop. I, I, I remember to gift this to you uh, for the baby, and then, uh, oh. <laughs> he he took like one of the one of the gems from the headband of intellect, and and like oh turned turned it into like a small bracelet, so that he now has a bracelet of yeah. Your child can have a bracelet of intellect, and like. I don't know. Increase uh, their their intellect to nineteen. <laughs> I guess. <laughs> oh my god! Beauty, <laughs> the fairies just gift Aurora like all this like amazing <laughs> things. I feel like that with my baby. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, everyone. Oh my god. I I, I graciously accept the headband, and I feel slightly overwhelmed on like. <laughs> What effects that will give the baby since I'm magically just augmenting him? <laughs> it's like, a magically augmented baby. That's yeah. So yeah. Just like thank you so much. I will. I'm. Sh I will put this on him when the time is right. You know, like yeah. Not fresh out of the womb for sure, but you know, when <laughs> when his brain's properly developed, I shall give it to him. Man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god, that might stunt <laughs> development. No, oh, jeez, that's that's a scary thought, guys. God damn. Yeah, I'm just straining a newborn baby's brain if I just put the bracelet and you know. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like um, Dante um, tries to lead you toward the the dining room. I guess uh, looks at Fatal and Fatal look. Does Fatal look like a hobo at this point? Like what uh, is? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Dante will say, "Um, fatal. You look uh, was for oh, how oh. long he traveled all those places." Oh, uh, <laughs> um, feel free to make yourself at home. If you also do not have a place to sleep tonight, you can um uh, rest here for 
for for today or as m- how many days you would like to stay? <laughs> So he also looks at he looks at oh that is like oh that's good my friend. Also I'll just wait. Can I talk to you later? Oh, regarding something. Of course. Uh, do you need to speak now or? No, can no, we, we can let after... the party first. Ah, okay. All and right. I still have to speak with the Red Knight beforehand too, so I'll speak with him first. All right. I just, uh, Dante, I just okay. tell Arturo Maro like, do you know a procedure called the cesarean section? And do you know <laughs> anyone who can perform it safely? <laughs> <laughs> then he just, uh, he just looks at you with like a what the fuck face. Like, don't you know how babies are delivered nowadays? I mean, you know, I don't. I don't want my wife to get do the traditional one because pushing is just so hard. It's easier if we just slice her tummy open and take the baby out, <laughs> and maybe have a cleric just cast regenerate on her to seal the wound right away. <laughs> oh god, I have so much. That it's pretty cool to do that. But at the same time, like, what do you call this? I just psychology like, stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you can dimension it, dimension door and a baby, then get it. <laughs> that. Oh, oh, no, let's not do that. Oh my god. So, uh, anyways, uh, um, Arturo says, uh, sure, I know somebody. Great. Rebecca! <laughs> We're not gonna have a difficult pregnancy. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. And then she's like, why would you have been worried in the first place, Han? <laughs> because when back when I was a little girl in my village, a lot of women died from childbirth. I'm just nervous. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll uh, be fine. <laughs> yeah, I guess like right, um, the servants serve, you know, us food. And it's yeah. everything's warm and comfortable and nice and... We continue just, you know, talking to each other. Dante tells um, you that uh, uh, they have a library upstairs. And if Rico, you want to learn more about, <laughs> like, I don't know, give the, the miracle of childbirth, there should be books <laughs> there as well, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, That's it. Uh, yeah, you can you can take it away, DM. Oh. Uh, I'll talk to Rico while we're here. Okay. Go ahead. Night. Red Knight. So I take off a ring from me. Oh. <laughs> it's awkward. Oh. And then I'm just like, I play fiddle with a bit. And I look at him. Well, just uh, something to tell you a bit regarding the investigation that I underwent regarding your godlyhood. Okay. And well, I could say that you have found a friend in the Order of the Gauntlet. Mm. Oh, good. I have stated regarding your, well, purest intentions about this realm. Hopefully, it stays the same. Yes, I, I admit that my presence here is a cause for concern, but I assure you I will do my best to be of service to the innocents here in Faerun. And That's I do good. trust the Order of the Gauntlet will take the right measures if I ever turn away, though I will do my best. I will do my best, especially now that I have a child to yes. set an example for. And uh, that's good. Well, you found an ally in the Order of the Gauntlet. My reports of you have been good. And all I will, all that I'm willing to ask you is for you to train the ones that are supposed to be under my command. <laughs> Knowing that you are capable in battle yourself. Oh, shit. Well, I. I should tell you that taking a break from adventuring, but training is not outside of the vows that I took, so I shall teach them all that I know, yes. And I will train them in the citadel of the strategic militants, and they can help my organization in bringing positive change to Faerun. And I nod, smiling, and I say, consider that our alliance. And then I hang him over the ring of protection, Mm. And I gave it to him and I say, oh, for the baby, by the way. There <laughs> 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 we go. <laughs> <laughs> this is a decked out baby, yo. Decked yeah, dude, out. dude, he, he hasn't even adventured yet and he's decked out. <laughs> <laughs> 
so this is how we explain and this is how we explain PCs that have all the magic items, you know. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, so... You know, like while we're having this chill time, like like Rico's baby just time travels from the future, and it's like I I time travel to this moment to thank you guys for this item, it saved my life, <laughs> <laughs> and then he disappears. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god. <laughs> and then oh my god. Uh, Fatal says, "So shall we have a meal? And to what honor do we have being here, Dante?" Yes. What is uh? What is the occasion? Aside for, um, you know, curb stop <laughs> I guess Gross. I guess I would just like to celebrate friendship, celebrate uh life, and most importantly, uh and then looking over at Rebecca's like tummy, uh to celebrate family. And then we play like Fast and Furious Latino <laughs> music. The camera <laughs> zooms out from the from the room, like through the window and going out towards you, like pointing at that direction. Yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> oh god. I have to, I have to replace his face now, give me a second. <laughs> Oh, yeah. God. A car just yeah. crashes into the mansion. It's like that someone say family. <laughs> someone say family. Oh God! Yeah. Yes. At this point, I'm sure like Sina is there. Uh, also, Fatal. <laughs> Maybe like yeah. Vin, like Vin Diesel, like the actual. Vin oh Diesel my God! <laughs> All no. <laughs> guys, guys, don't forget. Simulacrums are also there. Yeah. That's amazing. Bring us home, dear. It turns out you were just. It turns out you were just talking to a simulacrum of Arturo the whole time. Nah, oh my kidding. god. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> all right. So yeah, you all enjoy your meal. And wait, before I continue, though, doesn't Fatal have something to? Yeah, talk I have to about? talk to after oh. the dinner. Okay. After the dinner. Ah, okay. Yeah. Uh, so you guys have your dinner, and you talk about you kind of debrief, and you talk a bit about what the future looks like. Mm -hmm. Arturo is going to be continuing the good fight, trying to weed out all of the evil doers in the harpers mm. and then other than that he'll be keeping tabs on n but n is being handled right now primarily by the art of the gauntlet mm. by alcaras as you'll later discover as the years as the months or years pass so yeah mm. um there you go and then you know you can talk about the future a bit yourselves we don't necessarily have to roleplay that but then yeah you talk about the future and what you'll do and then fatal at any point you can talk to dante about what you want to talk to him about uh we, we can meet in the library because the library looks oh, cool okay the library <laughs> cool nice. sure. oh that's the library okay second so, floor yeah. yeah there you go so speaking with dante it's just like he sits down the chair he looks kind of like nervous and then he looks at you. Uh, before anything else, uh, he calls on the service to bring his bag. Okay. And then he opens a rucksack. And then, lo and behold, a white majestic robe appears before you, holding uh, it's what he holds before you. Oh. And then he hands it to you and says, Dante, I think you deserve this. And then that is the robe of the Arc Magi. Oh, okay. Dante takes it. And then he formulates in his head, so is this why you look like a homeless person now? <laughs> like you've just been <laughs> giving away your <laughs> all your your magic items. Yes, well, aside from that, I also retired from the Order of the Gauntlet. Oh, you, you've retired? Yes, oh. I did. What do you plan on doing now? A bit of soul sorting. Re regarding that, I, uh... I, well, I don't know if I have much time left in this world, knowing that the magics that I have used have brought some savagery upon my body. And then you can see, like, of course, the veins are blue and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I'm 
going to leave for somewhere else and I don't want to be that asshole giving you a gift telling you should give me something in return but I am if ever you have like a lying around scroll of the gate spell <laughs> Ah yes, of course, and then Dante just goes through like that. <laughs> the, the shelves. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then ha hands it over to you. Uh, we have quite a few, and <laughs> they're like just a lot. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, shit. Well, and then look at the surprise that we're having all this spells go so this is our time when we needed it. Well, anyway. my grandfather, he's a level 20. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <laughs> so, and then he looks at you intently like, like kind of hesitated to grab the scroll from you but still grabs it nonetheless and then looks at you so what do you know about this spell what it could bring me to another place right uh yes uh dante will tell you because because wayne doesn't know <laughs> so, <laughs> okay so dante, yeah, uh, dante explains stuff like that yeah, and yeah. then that's good that's good my family they're living the greatest lives and uh, my siblings well i think it's time for me to find my own path that's why i retired from the gauntlet and i think this tapping of the scroll could give me exactly just that a bit of soul searching i think do you think if um after your soul searching you would come back and um live the rest of your life with your family i mean don't you think it's um, quite the shame for you to leave them behind? Dante, I've lived with them for half my life now, and I'm an aging man. You know, being 30. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's actually 34, so I think I... Uh, I know what I'm going, what you call a midlife crisis. <laughs> <laughs> ah. But yes, I, once I come back. <laughs> well, should you come back and you decide that you would like to continue adventuring again, I will be happy to keep this safe for you. And then he gestures to the robe of the Arch Magi. Arch Magi. He nods at you and said, Well, consider it yours, friend. Consider will, it yours. Well, thank you. Um, I I do not have anything left to tell you, but ex except good luck and may Mistra and Azuth guide your way. And also, um, I did say that you could s spend the night here, but I would appreciate if you took a shower first. The servants will take care of you. <laughs> she just tells you, <laughs> politely telling you that you stink. And <laughs> 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 like servants arrive here and then they have like, you know, like multiple rolls of towels and like soap and like, yeah. uh, like, uh, oh, like scrubs, I guess. Uh, and they're like, they're yeah. waiting for you. Uh, and it says, no, 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 Dante, I think uh, the, this is the nature's best. Plus, now that I have a scroll, I think destiny awaits for me now. Thank you very much for your hospitality and for everything. I trust that you're going to watch out the Red Knight for me. Of course. That he keeps his promises. That is, I feel like the longer I have spent with Rico Bishop now, um, our we have become quite um how do i say this our affinities with each other have aligned and i feel that uh i need him as much as he needs me i guess that's good that's good to hear and then uh what do you call this Fatal taps his, like, what he calls his laugh, saying, oh, good talk, good talk, Dante. <laughs> <laughs> Stands up and then reaches out to shake your hand. Yeah, Dante shakes it. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, when, it's sad that I also come in for a hug knowing that he's really... <laughs> uh, yeah, Dante, Dante will come in for a hug, <laughs> sure. All right. But, like... All right. Yeah, as as Fatal lets go of the hug and turns around, Dante will just like you know press the tape himself real quick. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! All right, so with that, I go downstairs, uh, meet up with Fenrir, final person. I just want to talk about what happens a bit. So uh, I give everyone gifts to Fenrir. 
But bro, you get my friendship. My true other friendship. <laughs> so I share with him uh, a glass of ale, you know, one last time before I leave. And then after yeah. that ale, I say goodbye to everyone and then walk out of the mansion, casting the gate spell to a place that I don't know where it's going to be yet. So that's hey. the retirement of Fatal. Hey. Dang. Like, this is a permanent retirement, not Ah, uh, yes, yes. You might, you might see him somewhere else, though. As an NPC. Gotcha. As an NPC. Hey. Oh, that's cool. Man, I would hate someone who picks up on a on a fight with an NPC level 17 like him. Yeah. <laughs> level 18? Ah, oh, yeah, level 18. <laughs> level 18. <laughs> well, he exits, you know, I just, like, murmur, like, I can't believe he retired at the age of 34. Like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what's your yeah, age? <laughs> Are you, like, what's your age? I'm 28. Oh, you're almost there. <laughs> yeah, almost there, bud. <laughs> but I will, like, I'm, like, taking a break for 10 years and coming back at 38. So it's like, what? <laughs> like, he's baffled, <laughs> <What>? you know? <laughs> <laughs> but he did retire. A there you go. At least from that part. And GG. that may not be the last time you see Fatal, but that is going to be the last time you see him for a while. Yes, yes, yes. That's a nice way to retire, dude. I like it. <laughs> yeah. Becoming a hermit. <laughs> Alright. And then... Yeah, okay. So, Dante, I will go forward a little bit. Because okay. the party ends, and you all kind of go your separate ways, doing the things that you are going to do. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention also, is that Dante... You go back to the Harper's headquarters mm -hmm. without your grandfather for reasons that you discussed amongst yourselves. And then, yeah, you can report whatever you want to report. So I think you'll report that you did indeed find Arthur Amaro. Mm -hmm. I don't tell him. Yeah. Where he, I don't tell them where he is now, though. Yeah, you don't tell them where he is, and yeah. then, yeah, they kind of like ask you where you found him and then you know like up to you what you want to share you can make up a story however you want uh, you did tell them uh, yeah um uh, dante will yeah, be how do you want to dance around this <laughs> uh does dante feel like um telling cuz he has like mixed emotions right like he wants to tell part part of the truth so that the Maro name can be cleared a little bit but also yeah. protect uh Arturo from like you know Harper's wanting to investigate him further or like you know bring him bring him in for questioning whatever so uh -huh. he will figure out like the best things to say that tries to accomplish those things like clearing the Maro name and protecting his grandfather sure and i think you can do that so this is what you tell them then basically to follow all of those things yeah you tell them that you did find arturo Maro. he was in the shadow fell i mean you found him in the shadow fell but that's not where he was he was in well, what do you call this again? He was in the Fey Wild, and that's why he was away for a very long time. Mm. So that that take care that takes care of the lost communication part. And then it turns out that N, who became a high harper because of ratting out the Maro family, is the one who was going after all of these celestials and. Um, allies of the gods and with both you and Arturo and your party helping out to defeat N um, yeah you were able to successfully do that with your grandfather's help and with everyone else's help mm. and then they're kind of like basically satisfied with that answer because as soon as they hear that the people who are doing all of these things are taken care of by Arturo Maro, the person that they were focused on. They're like, oh, okay. Then that is all we need to know. 
it is good to know that Arturo Maro is indeed alive, and that he is not against the Forgotten Realms. Then he says, uh, your higher up basically says, I think it's time for you to get promoted then, Bright Candle. Mm. Then he, he takes your Bright Candle badge. Mm. I guess it's like a badge. I've always imagined it being a badge. Mm -hmm. And then he replaces it with a Wise Owl badge. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. So does Darfin um, become a this... High Harper? Darfin? Yeah. Darfin was not really involved in that whole thing. He was doing other things. But then in this in this like um meeting that's happening, Darfin also is like outside. He catches that you have the wise owl badge now. Mm -hmm. And then he says like hmm. And here I thought it would be later that we'd be equals. Oh. Then he extends his hand. This time, to shake your hand, and he says, Welcome, Dante, the wise owls. Dante will extend his hand to shake a Darfins, <clears throat> and then he will say, Yeah, Dante will say, Don't be so formal, old man. My training's not <laughs> over yet. And then oh, that's shit. it. <laughs> he smiles. Yeah. And he smiles as well. And then, yeah. In the future, you can do a little more training with your master, but at this point, he really doesn't have much left to teach you. Yeah. He's a bit surprised that his former master, Ed, turns out to be a bad guy. So, yeah, that's one surprise that he was not expecting from you. Right. And yeah, tells you about his time training under N as well. He used to be the the best illusionist he ever knew. Mm. So, yeah. So you get a bit of insight as to how N functions as a person. Mm. Yep. Got it. Cool. There you go. Cool, cool, cool. Alrighty. Okay. And then... Where we'll end at is the birth of Rico Bishop's hey. child. So let us yeah. see. Let us see. Is it a male or female? Is Ooh. it male or female? Here we hey, go. What do so, I roll? Uh, <laughs> um, I'll roll it. I'll roll it, Raph. And then let's do this na lang. Odd is male and Okay, I knew it. Guys, guys, I knew it. Rafi is the first no, person it... that's gonna have a child in our everything. We, we have, <laughs> we roll male or female, but then we also roll on the like LGBTQ plus oh, <laughs> like, wow, spectrum. Wow. That's funny. I'll leave that to you. Like, I'll only do the male and female. <laughs> Rafi, I told you, you'll be the first guy who's gonna have a kid in our, you know, Man of friends. No, okay, not in go, reality. I'm rolling the D100 now. Oh my god, I actually even... want it to be a... What is it? What is it? What is what it? What is it? What is it? What is it? It's drama. It's a number. So... <clears throat> um... It's two months later. Okay. And now your wife is going into labor now. And yeah, a couple of hours later... You are greeted with a baby boy. Oh, oh nice. I love baby boy. boy. My son, yes. 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 <laughs> That's what you want. It's what you wanted. It's what you wanted. Oh my like god. I always wanted to have a son. If it was, like a, if it was a daughter, I would have ignored her. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. Oh, no, I'm, kidding, I'm, kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. There you go. Oh. You have a baby boy now, and then. Uh, I mean, we all know at this point that gender is just, you know. Yeah, yeah, just, I get that. I mean, the, come on, Rico's a girl, but a dude at the same time, right? So. I know, dude, I know. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. Um, Rebecca says, Rico, it's her beautiful baby boy. Then she's like, what should we name him? Name? I, I look at the baby and... All I can feel is like extreme joy and happiness. So I tell him like he's 
Uh, he's so beautiful and he makes both of us so happy. I could feel so much joy coming out of me and I can see it on you too. I think we should name the boy Revel. Oh shit, Revel? God damn it. Nice. It's the revival of your old character, god damn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then she says, "What a also lovely name." Okay. Oh, God damn it! Nice. Good nice. inspiration, man. God fucking damn it! Then <laughs> <laughs> Rebel, Rebel Skywalker. <laughs> oh man. Okay. And Rebel Bishop is born today. It is. <laughs> what was the real Rebel's last name? Us Corvid, right? Oh, Rebel yeah, Rebel Corvid. Okay, so Raph, mark yeah. down the day for your son's birthday. It is, let's see, Elias's. What's two months after Elias's? Hold on. Calendar of Harpos. Here we go. And then I'm going to be rolling a d20 to see which day it is. Here we go. Okay. Elias's. Ah, Marpanoth. So he, your son, Revel, is born on the 15th of Marpanoff. Birthday! Happy Marpanoth. birthday. Happy birthday. Marpanoff is equivalent go. of what? It's the equivalent of March. October. October. Ah, October, Ooh, baby. Baby. October, October baby, 15th, like, dude, it's like... so close to your actual yeah. birthday. Yeah, also so close. It's five <laughs> days short. Five days away, yeah. Yeah, five days short, my dude. Damn. Wait, isn't, isn't Rico's birthday also the same birthday you have? No, his no. birthday is on uh, on a festival of the Red Knight. I... Ah, okay. Yeah. Hey, yeah. There you go. All right, and... That is where our campaign for season two will leave off. Hey. With family. 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 Yeah. I just realized the theme for this season was less about freedom and more about family. Family. <laughs> family. You can't escape it. <laughs> you can't escape it anymore, man. I know. <laughs> yeah. Ah, Gee. I like to... I like to imagine like days after Rico just finds like a tuning fork that's like attuned to Elysium and he just visits his parents and is like, look, I have a baby. Your line won't die out. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll oh. be like, congratulations, son. <laughs> As oh one son, God. he's just going to become your next player, but this time he's just stacked with magic items. He's oh just God. stacked. He's <laughs> level one and it's in 2019. One. Because oh. of the freaking items. Level 1 has legendary items already. Alright. And he's like 10 years oh. old. <laughs> oh. oh my god. Alright, uh, uh, Wayne, go ahead and end the episode. Okay, GG. <laughs> GG. That was Plucking Strings, episode 10, or the epilogue. Uh, that was how uh, we ended that campaign, season 2. Thank you so much for watching and joining us on this bumpy ride. And I hope you had a good time. Uh, that's it. Thank you so much again. Uh, peace. Don't forget about family. Bye-bye. <laughs>